I'm waiting. Hi everyone, welcome to Couch Creations live on Sunday night. Happy Time Change Sunday, which most of us are probably not going to be happy about for a couple, for about a week or so. It'll take us a while to get readjusted to the the bump in our time and it feels like we're kind of like running behind today. So today, as promised, I told you we were going to do uh, another cross. So this one I'm doing with light blue and yellow. Um, again, you could use this for uh, Ukrainian support or this could just be French country because I love the colors of blue and yellow together. Um, they go really, really good together. So um, I'm going to show you how we lay out the frame, how we build the deco mesh pieces, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to come in and lay the florals. Um, so it's all going to depend on the quality of mesh that you have. So if you get something like uh, less than premium quality mesh, for example, like something from Hobby Lobby, uh, something from like Michael's, something where it's really super thin, you're probably going to struggle with the technique because the mesh is not strong enough. It's not, it doesn't feel thick. It feels very thin. Um, a way that you can combat that, however, is to double up on your pieces. So instead of doing a single piece, you would just put one on top of the other and kind of thicken that up. And I think you'll be pleased with the results over just leaving them, you know, just with a single layer. That's how I've solved it in the past. That's how I've also um, coached people on how to fix their floral cross wreaths um, based on the fact that you they have less than mesh. It may have been mesh that they bought just like on a whim or something that they wanted to do. Um, but obviously the better quality mesh, the longer your wreath is going to hold up. Remember, darker colors will fade more noticeably than lighter colors. So that's why I'm doing this one in a, a yellow and a light blue. The yellow is actually a um, natural and yellow jute mesh. So this one's a little bit different. Um, although I did experiment today and tried to see if I could cut through this with a wood burning tool and surprise, surprise, I was able to get through it no problem which means that it's probably going to hold up a little bit better because I'm not rotary cutting or rotary cutting it. And I'm keeping, if you notice the, um, how it's cut, I am staying pretty consistent on my lines all the way through. Hey, so hey, happy Sunday, Diana Parker said, hi, can't newbie here. Let us know where you're from. Yes. I love having um, new people. So definitely as you come in, say hi, let me know uh, where you're from. You never know. You might meet a crafting person here. So this is a Dollar Tree cross wreath. The dimensions on this are 24 inches long. And then just, this is just the frame because we haven't quite um, built up on it yet. And it's 12 inches at its widest point. Now, people will say, can, you know, even though you're going to build this, will this still fit in a box or will it push us into that dimensional inflated rate shipping? And by the time we finish, remember the edge of my cutting mat where the darker square is, this is 24 inches. So it's 24 inches wide. This one actually goes 36 inches long, but right here is the cutoff for a 24 inch. So as you can see, if you place your cross, um, on the diagonal, it leaves you plenty of space in your box for this cross so it will fit on a diagonal. So that's how you lay it in the box is corner to corner. All right, so what you'll also notice is I used six inch pipe cleaners or just 12 inch pipe cleaners cut in half because the only thing you need your pipe cleaners for is to hold the mesh. Um, you'll put four on each of the sections up to that center cross. So there's four here, there's four here, there's four here, and then each section here will be four. This one has four, this one has four, for a grand total of 24. Now, because I'm doing a two-tone, that means that I'm only gonna need 12 blue and 12 yellow. And the pieces that I have cut for this are 10 inch pieces. So they're 10 by 10 inch mesh. And so um, 
This is how you'll line it up. I just have this color coded so I know what piece goes where so that I don't accidentally like, um, as I'm wiring this in, uh, I would like skip it, meaning that the outside edges of my cross are gonna begin with blue, the inside four are all gonna meet for a yellow, and then everything else is kind of like adequately positioned so that I know where everything lays out. Now you could add more or less depending upon how you lay your cross deco mesh pieces in and um, just make it your own. I'm pretty picky on how I like um, my folded pieces of deco mesh to lay out. Um, so you'll see that I'm pretty precise on how they look. And what that does is when you finish the product, you'll have a very um, unique look in that all the pieces will look relatively the same. Um, everything is gonna always be radiating away from the center of the cross. So all the points will be you know, coming out this way They'll be coming out this way, that way, and upwards. Um, I had somebody ask if you could use zip ties to zip tie this on. I would suggest no. Here's the reason why. You only need to put enough uh, tension on the two middle sections of your frame just to hold your mesh pieces in. So if we do zip tie, and let's say for example you don't zip tie your pieces of deco mesh together, and you're going to rely on the strength of either a piece of, um, what do you call it, pipe cleaner or zip tie, you're gonna end up zip tying this too tight and you'll probably break the welds somewhere along the course of your mesh because you're trying to keep the pieces in line. When you do that, then it keeps consistency in how your cross pieces will lay. When you just, you know, like try to fit them in, for example, um, let's show you how to make the piece, first of all. So I prefer to always have the finished edge on this side. So you're going to 10 by 10 piece. You're going to go corner to corner. And I'm pretty precise in making sure that this all measures up on that side. And then I'm also going to make sure that this measures up here. So you pretty much have a, as perfect as a triangle as you could possibly get. And then from the bottom corner, you're just going to walk your fingers up just like that. And you see it's starting to form wings. And as you pull them up, you have wings formed. Now, the reason why I like this technique on a cross is because it either resembles angel wings or it resembles like um, flames of fire, like the Holy Spirit fire. So I'm going to zip tie this together because this trying to get this to stay tight and on here is a little too hard. Save yourself the aggravation. You can either get, um, somebody suggested mini uh, rubber bands from like the Dollar Tree. You could use that. Whatever you need in order to keep your, your flames or your wings tight. And then I prefer to use, these are actually zip tie cutters because they will cut this flush so there's no sharp pointy pieces. But as you can see, you've got a perfect little S shape here in your wings and that keeping that consistent all the way through all of your pieces and trying to keep it you know, as, as perfect as you possibly can, this is what makes yours look different from everybody else's. So this technique, is required so that when I go and I lay this in on top of like my yellow pipe cleaner, it, I don't have to fight this. I just have to tighten this enough to hold these pieces in place. Okay. Uh, Richard said, I just did one following your teachings in yellow and white. Awesome, Richard. You have to let us know what it looks like. Yeah, I'd have... love to see it. Um, you can email me. So you can go to info at catscreationsandmore.com and send me your photos. I'd love to see them. Um, hi, uh, Diana. She says she uh, has watched before, but not live. So welcome. Yeah. Hi, she, Kathy. She's the one that said newbie. She's from Clearwater, Florida. Okay. Um, hi, Brenda. Hi, Rebecca. How long did I cut my pipe cleaners? These are actually 12-inch pipe cleaners that I cut in half. 
Um, because I've done it before with full length pipe cleaners and you'll start to realize you're just wasting product because you'll end up having to cut them. They only have to be long enough to hold your deco mesh pieces on. Okay. No, listen, I can see that I'm collecting ideas from my parents' grave blanket. Oh, this is going to be. Cross rows. Hope all is well with you. Can't wait to see what you'll do. Yeah. Um, and Deborah said, did you wood burn? I just got on. So, yes, I did wood burn. Even though this is a jute, uh, it's a poly jute mesh, um, I tried it on my wood burner to see if I would be able to cut it. And when it went through, no problem. I was like, cool, I'm going to do it all the way through. And then in addition, whoop, let me try to get the other piece. Um, here's the blue. So we're doing these two colors all the way through. So it's a very French country look. So um, let's do the petal one more time. So let me set that one aside. Kind of all pieces are cut to 10 inches. So it's a 10 by 10. Exactly. It's exactly a 10 by 10. And what I've noticed is if you can keep, when you're doing your wood burner, if you can keep your wood burner in an individual column all the way from the top to the finished bottom, um, it helps it fray less. Because it's when we have these little edges hanging over or little pieces that aren't quite part of a column and it's kind of like a missing piece, those are where it's going to fray the most. Okay, so here we go again. We're going to take our 10 by 10 inch piece. We're going to fold this over and then you're going to start matching up your edges as best as you can. It's going to be really hard to get it exact, but you can try. And then I'm going to do the same over here. I'm just going to pull this so that it lines up. Charlie, this is actually kind of considered a low foil. In fact, there's really no foil in it at all. Yeah, this is a jute, poly a jute, jute right. mesh. But so you can do it any type you want. You can do it high foil, low foil. Mm -hmm. But it's basically the base. Right. Okay. And then we're always going to start at the bottom, and you're just going to gather, gather, gather. And you can see how it's forming those really beautiful wings. You're just going to pull them all the way up. You're going to pinch this down here. We're going to put a zip tie in it. I find zip ties are easier. Sometimes. Unless you get a broken zip tie. And then you have to do it all over again. Okay, just like that. And what this does is it keeps your petals in this shape. That way they're not kind of flipping out. They're not kind of coming undone. Because I see that a lot when I look at other um, cross races, when you look at their petals or the way that the decamesh pieces are laying, they're kind of like sometimes haphazard. And it's I can tell it the reason is A, they use subquality mesh and didn't thicken it up. And number two, they didn't secure their mesh together to keep it in that shape. Because once you zip tight like this, it stays in the shape. It doesn't open up, it doesn't, it doesn't alter from what you've done here. And that's the exact look that you want all the way through your wreath. We're gonna, uh, the mesh in this case you can get from Craft Outlet. Yeah, I got all of this from Craft Outlet. And then, um, kind of says, uh, I haven't watched you before, um, welcome. And then, uh, A wood burning, what is a wood burning tool? So I kind of put on there, what is a wood burning tool? Yeah, a wood burning tool. It just has a chiseled point. And so when you take it, you're going to, you know, it's like a little knife point. Um, I make sure that I get one that goes up to 400 and I think it's 425. 425 yeah. And then it allows me to cut. And what it does is it kind of seals the mesh where it's cut as long as you keep it in the column. Okay, last okay. one. Yeah. Last one. Again, I'm going to go from corner to corner, just like this, so you guys can see this one more time. And then we'll get to building, because the building part goes really easy once you have all the prep stuff done. Okay. And again, we're going straight up the middle. You'll see how those wing points just kind of gather. We're going to tip them straight up, take a zip tie. 
and I'm just using six inch zip ties. I get these from Amazon in about thousand quantities because I use them quite a bit. Can you zip tie about what? By an inch or three quarters of an inch? In? It's just like a fingertip. So yeah, about three quarters. And then just snip that off and we're ready to assemble. Okay, so you will always start from the bottom and work your way in. So either you start here, you start on the outside edge and work in, here work in, and then at the top work in. The reason being is you can't really start here and try to tuck each subsequent piece underneath because they lay together to where the points point down and they point out and they point up. So here is our blue. Our blue is going in first. It's getting housed right in between those two. I'm gonna pick this up and my pipe cleaner is going to go just above where my zip tie is. So I'm going to ask what color is the blue mesh? Is it it's just a light blue. blue. Yeah, this is light blue. And then I'm just going to tuck that down, okay? I'm gonna take my yellow. My yellow is gonna go right on top of the blue just above my zip tie and I'm just going to twist that up and then I'm going to tuck this down okay grab another piece of blue blue goes on top and do you see how easy the process becomes once your pieces are all in place It just makes it so much easier to do it that way rather than trying to do it all at the same time. I'm gonna sweep these ones up just a touch. Okay, I'm not worried so much about making sure that it covers the other one because we're running floral up the center anyway. So this one's coming in here. Just above, remember I'm taking my pipe cleaners, putting my pipe cleaner just above where my zip tie is and then this kind of lays down on top okay take some of these and that would look better if you flip the pieces so the edges are under or down i like them up this is just like i mean it, it's your choice but i like my my edges facing up it's just that's the way i like the um the look of my, I call them flames or wings, whatever you would like. Okay, just like that. We're going back in with our yellow. Okay, I was just joining in. Hope you've had a great weekend so far. Move that forward. That says I love that blue sparkle. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, that one does have a little bit of foil on it. Yes, the blue is a thin metallic. It's not the thick that you guys know that I like the wide. This was actually the only light blue I had without going to a royal blue. Taking this. The thing about this too is you can use any colors you want. As long as they're good matching colors. Oh yeah, I've done it. The first one I did was purple and white, which is gorgeous for Easter. Um, I've done a, all like a white and a yellow. You've done a pink and a white. I haven't done pink. Mm -mm. No. Oop, need yellow. See, this is why having um, my pipe cleaners color coordinated really helps. And you don't have to worry about the sides of your cross being seen because once we add our floral, our floral is going to take these and kind of lay them down. Okay, we're back to our blue. like this. So I said I noticed on the cross I made the fans were not all the same because I didn't keep the finished edges on the same sides before folding and scrunching so I see that makes a difference. Um, like you're laying you laying all the sides on the same side. Laying all the sides on the same side. Like like you like it with the edges on the, up, on the top right? Yes. For me there is a right and a wrong way of putting them on there. So um, for mine, oops, most of mine, it's always going to be where the zip tie is up. So the zip tie in is up. 
because that's how I created it. Okay, just laying that down. Got one more blue piece. Zip tie up. You could cut the excess if you wanted of your um, pipe cleaner off. It's entirely up to you. I'm just really picky. Like they all have to lay a specific way. Maybe I'm too picky. I don't know. Hey, Roseanne, glad you're doing good. She said it's been a while since I've been able to catch you guys live. Hope you're all doing well. Glad to see that you're here. Welcome back. So see how this, and I know it looks a little funky looking at it like this, but like I said, all of my tips, everything is all going in the same general direct, the direction. All my tips are going, like they all have to be like in alignment. And then as we do our sides, it's the same way. So we have it's our- It's so pretty, it looks like it used to really- Right? Sometimes I can be a little too picky though, because then it just frustrates me if I can't get it exactly the way I want it. Okay, so always building, starting from the outside and working your way in. I'm always trying to. Hi, right, Lynetta. Uh, is the Dollar Tree cross frame? Here's another one. Yeah, I haven't done one of these since uh, last year about this time. Yeah, and Roseanne said, I love the colors. Yeah, these are gorgeous colors together. And it's nice because I'm like always wanting to gravitate back to purple. So. This could easily be a like uh, a gravesite cross. Yes. So the nice thing about the Dollar Tree frames is you could take a stake and on the back side you can run your stake up, zip tie it to the side, and then you can stake it into the ground. So we're always trying to get our centers. Thank you, Sue. She said, I think it's one of the reasons your designs are extraordinary compared to the others out there. Aw, thanks. So we're always trying to get our uh, four inside yellow as close to the center square as possible. And then what it does is this kind of covers up those corner pieces. So now we do the same thing. We work from the outside in. Just like this. And that's all the pipe cleaners do is it holds the pieces in place where you want them to stay. Got two more yellow. It's a really simple design to complete. Just be consistent, you know, build your cross pieces first out of your mesh, zip tie them all together. You know, you could even do a trio of colors. You know, you could do a purple, a white, and then a lavender, and then let it kind of have that ombre look to it. Mm -hmm. Slide this. See, I'm trying to slide that one a little bit further. Just like that. And then if I do it just above the zip tie, it helps keep that from sliding or moving around. Oh, Roseanne, uh, thanks for reminding me. It's still need to give it to you guys for a larger donation. What's this month's fund donation for? So this month's fund donation is uh, Ukraine. So we're doing all of our Facebook stars for uh, Ukraine. And if you want to donate, you can either do stars and all of our stars money is we match a hundred percent with our Facebook stars, or you can go directly to a uh, UKRBaptist.org and you can donate directly to them. 
they coordinate with the local churches in Ukraine who know where and what needs to be addressed. Like they know where food needs to be allocated. They know, you know, who needs transportation. They know who needs the medical point and they coordinate with the Ukrainian government to make sure that those needs are being met. Okay, four last pieces. We're going right here for this one. And you can see how quickly it goes together. Very spring-like. Make sure that stays in. Take this one, lay that there. And our blue. If the money goes to, like I said, the Baptist Church, if it goes towards displaced families, shelter, uh, medical, um, clothing, anything that they need. So if you go to ukrbaptist.org, and I'll have Steve put the link at the bottom, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can actually go to the website and read about how how they um, are utilizing donations that are that are coming in from outside of the Ukraine. Okay. So here's our last one. And as you can see, we've got these pretty close to making a little um, holder for our floral that's going to go in the middle. So here's our last one. So I'm going to try to push this so you guys can kind of see what it looks like together. And as you look, this kind of goes outside our 24 by 24 inch box. But what I have also found is that corner to corner, it goes about 31 inches. So here's corner 31 all the way down to the bottom. So we shouldn't have any problem. I think when I did the very first one, it went a little larger, was closer to 33. And all I did is just lift the tips up so that those sat up against the edges of the box. Um, that way it kept the, the tips of the, um, the flames or the wings where they needed to be. So, now we're ready to lay in our florals. You guys ready? Let me grab my florals. What are you doing? I just told to try the link on my phone. And it still won't work? Yeah. But it worked yesterday. And you see, you actually see the website when I post the link? Yeah. But I just can't get it. <laughs> What's funny is, it's like, I was telling Steve, I was like, the link works fine on my phone. And then last night as we went, uh, for dinner, I was like, try the link. Sure enough, he pulls up the link and he can get, he can connect just fine. Yeah. So yeah. who knows? Yeah. Okay. So for my florals, um, we know that the Ukrainian national flower is sunflowers. I didn't really want to do sunflowers because sunflowers are a little more trending to the gold, like a golden brown. So, um, I always look at what's going to be my focal floral for the center. And let me show you what I picked. I chose to go, I think these are, are these, they're either stargazer lily or tiger lilies. I'm not sure which. I always get them confused. The ones with the spots and the specks. This is going to be our focal point flower, and we're going to be using some of the buds um, throughout the design. So let me show you. This is kind of how I lay things out. So I kind of take my lily and I lay that in. And I'm like, ooh, that looks really pretty. Because I planned it so that we would have all yellow around the outside. And then when you lay that blue lily in, then it really makes that color just stand out and pop. Now, if I had planned it and put all the blue on the inside, it would still look okay and just kind of almost get lost. And then... So these are the stargazer lilies. Are they stargazer? Okay. And um, Sue said this cross would be a great home or public symbol for hope, safety, and peace for the Ukrainians. Absolutely. And we did a prayer for Ukraine grief, uh, Kathy did on Friday. So now what we're gonna do, like I said, this is what I did before, just laying out my florals. I had the buds just kind of coming out here. 
So we have those, those buds kind of laying in here. And this is what I suggest for all of you because this is the biggest question I get asked. How do you know where to put the floral? How do you know where to stop, where to start? What I do is I lay everything out first just to kind of get an idea of roughly what I want it to look like. For example, I knew that I wanted to add daffodils in here and the daffodils are actually going in a little bit more towards the top. Might actually go down a little bit more. Let's take it down one, put it on the blue, just like that. We have one daffodil there. We're gonna lay in another one right about here on our blue. And then we're placing another one in here. So these just have some really long picks for now. So I'm like, okay, kind of liking how that's going. Kind of like this. Not sure if I want to put these down here because then it looks way too matchy matchy. And then I was like, okay, what other blue floral can I add? So I came up, Michael's had, I don't think they have them this year. They're kind of like a bluey green color floral. And these are still too long for me to actually use right now um, as far as the pick wise, but I found if I came in and I laid them in and I'm like, okay, let's look at how that looks. Adding our blue. Um, trying to find the ones I had before. They're already pre-cut. We're coming in here. With this one as well. This will be a little different. And then we are coming in right in here with this. And then I was like, okay, A, I only had three daffodils, so I'm like, have to make that work somehow. I like the fact that I'm using these, it's like the same mesh color blend in the tulips. And then I was like, well, what else can I use besides tulips that I happen to have on hand? Because we all know that Hobby Lobby is closed on Sunday, so you have to use what you got. Um, I came up with mums. So we're gonna be popping in mums. I think I had three here, just on the blues. One, two, this one actually went up further. We had one, two, and three. Oops, we are going to add these to the outside as well. So I want you guys just to see how easy it is to lay them out, okay? Hmm. Kind of liking that. And then we need Three some... of the blue flowers are in the tulips. Um, the yellows are daffodils and mums. And then we need another one for up here. And I'm like, okay, this is a good base. I can work with this. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to thicken these things up. But what do you guys think so far of just the floral placements? And you don't always have to agree with me just because it's my layout and I'm doing the live. You can go, I think that sucks. It's not my favorite design you have. But this is what I would recommend that you do. And make sure that everything, like the line for your florals, stays along the same line as your uh, deca mesh pieces. And we're going to bring the florals all the way down right into here. So it's gonna pretty much end right at the end of our frame. And same thing here, we're gonna feather and we're gonna fill all the way around this. But what do you think of the general layout for now? You guys will love it. Plus I've made two cross wreaths a couple of years ago. Okay. Let's uh, see. The first of the base is a Dollar Tree cross frame. And then, um, also, when you're using, sorry, go ahead. Sue. Oh, Rich said, look, looks good. I arranged mine like four times before I glued them in. Yes, <laughs> and you can do that. You know, like I'm going to come in and I, I'm going to have to get my tulips cut to where they kind of fit in here. And I want my tulips to lay a little bit flatter and then have my mums kind of sit on top. And if you have really ugly heads on your tulips, you know, don't be afraid 
to pop these off. This one wasn't ultimately horrible, but... Yeah, remember, she's going to be filling in a lot of um, filler and florals in, so you won't see the gaps around the center mm -mm. of the lily. Nope. These are just a general idea. You've got to get in some base flowers. So you have your focal flower, which is my blue lily. And then I've got my medium flowers, which are my daffodils and my tulips and my mums. So yes, I'm going to come back in like I'm doing right now. I'm just kind of playing with the, the tulip heads and trying to put together a better bunch. Okay, so the center blue lily is pale. It is very pale. And then I'm going to take this one. I want a, something with a little bit more. Let me just take this one apart. And I do this from time to time. I rearrange my own tulips to find a bunch that works for me. You know, Which is you can. What's that? You said you can, stem, you can steam the flowers to kind of make them go back into a nice shape. Yes, you can. So that's another good recommendation for um, an item that um, most people don't even think about is like one of those little portable uh, travel steamers will work really good for that. So I'm kind of laying that oh, out. No, you have to follow this design. You could follow all your, do all your different colors, mm -hmm. wherever you want to do it. Yeah, and it's funny because I was like, because you're trying to coach people who you know, I, my flower, you know, arranging kind of sucks. I don't know where to go with my florals. And you're like, okay, so what did you pick for your focal? And you're like, I have no idea. And you're like, well, you got, you got to have a focal point for your florals. So, um, help me find one, you know, that you like. I'm just grabbing new tulips, trying to find ones that have better heads. Like this one will go in here like that. So, and then I want tulips to end. I'm so picky. Picky when it comes to what they look like. Because I want them to look nice. Okay, there's a good one. I don't know if I'm going to want them to go that far. I did here. Um, I don't think I will do that there. We'll keep this one handy. Okay, so filler flowers, right? So I've got my main, my medium. These are also medium, my little tulips, all staying in that same color palette. I kind of like leaving the greenery on because it kind of helps give it a little bit of a balance. But then I have all these really gorgeous fillers. So I have things like these. I don't know what these are called. Thank you for the star scales. Um, I think Joanne sent 50 earlier, so did just sent uh, 200. Aw, thanks so much, ladies. Okay, so these yeah, are what Cindy I'm... Cindy sent 50 earlier. Thanks, Cindy. So these will be the things that I feather towards the end, and I like just being able to take these and break these apart. These are from Hobby Lobby, and I always feather to the edge. I always start really super small to the edge, and then I will come up, you know, as we get, as we get closer, these will kind of filter in and you'll see what I'll do. I'm just kind of laying these all in right now, just like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna start committing, which means I like the way I'm, I'm seeing things kind of come into play and now I need to start gluing them in place. And BJ, try your own design. She said, could you use a big bow and no flowers? Yep, I've had people do that before. Some people put, like, if they're doing it for a memorial for a loved one or a family member, they'll put a photo in the front, you know, and they might add a bow. Um, I've had people put, like, the angels for the angel tree topper. They'll put the angel right in the center, so the angel's the center of the cross. So it there's so many different things that you can do to vary your design. It doesn't have to be... You know just follow along this is my recipe so I'm going to take and now what I'm doing is I'm lifting up my petals and I'm starting with the blue okay so these are my blue feather flowers then I'm going to um, let's see 
You want to kind of get something a little bit lightweight. I don't want to do tulips. I'm looking at what I have here. These might be a little too orange. Let me look. Let me pull some of these. These are just little florals. So I'm just looking for something to kind of come in here and just from a size comparison, let's pull some of the grass up here with this as well. Let's pull these apart. Uh, this one doesn't want to slide up. Look. How do I want to do this? I'm pulling it apart off the pick. So I think I want these in smaller pieces. Have you thought about putting a bow or ribbon on this? Uh, no, not on this design. Okay, I'm going to add some little yellows. So I only do this to the outside edge. Just to kind of break that apart and I'm feathering that down. And see, you don't want to come in with something big. You kind of want to come in with something soft. And now I'm going to come in with a little bit bigger on my blue. Don't quite need that long piece. So I'm using my glue skillet, which just has melted glue in it. it just makes it so much easier to lay my florals in. I want to keep making sure I'm pulling my glue threads apart. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to add my marigold right in. And she's just gluing right down into the netting of the mesh. Mm -hmm. Remember we talked about how glue and mesh? They're best friends. They're best friends. <laughs> exactly. Now see, sometimes your tulips can get a little too long because they're on these super large stems. So I'm going to pull them apart, but I want to keep the greenery. So I'm going to dismantle these. You know, this is all I always wanted to make something like that. That is totally beautiful. Isn't that pretty? And so I'm just coming in, and now I'm laying in my tulips. Zelda, Joanne, Don, Deborah. Right where I want them Deborah, to be. Deborah, you're feeling? I'm getting better. So thank you for that. And thank you for those of you that have been praying. I've had people, you know, reach out specifically and say, how can I pray for you? Um, so I appreciate those prayers. They have been paying off. Let's make sure this comes off. Claire said, I contacted Facebook about my stars problem. So far, no response. <sighs> it's going to be tough. Um, trying to think. There has to be somebody you can call. Um, possibly. See, I'm going to move this out of the way. So as I'm just, if you notice what I'm doing, I'm just kind of coming in. And I'm like alternating. Blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow. I'm going to come in and pull these apart. I'm still going to use my greenery, but you'll see where I decide to add that and why that makes a difference to do it on your own. Like these were a little too thick and I'm also laying everything so that it's all radiating down. Like none of my flowers are going straight up and down. I'm going to pull this one. I like the darker blue. I think they're different. Yeah, I was just going to say they're a little bit different. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my marigold. I'm going to plop my marigold in. And I'm not, I'm not bunching them really tight together. If you notice, I'm kind of creating little gaps. Let's pull this one. 
That one's way too long. I'm working up to my daffodil. So I'm trying not to scrunch them all in there. So I'm trying to keep everything size-wise, like it all makes sense. Okay. Trying to make sure I'm pulling all my glue threads back out. Just like this. And plop that all back in. That's why I like having the glue skillet is a, when you're working with florals, when I've used my glue skillet, I've never burnt myself. Knock on wood, right? Because mm -hmm. um, I was saying never, never means, um, well, up to this point. Let's just say that. I'm gonna grab a couple darker tulips. So I'm gonna add up a little couple darker ones. I'm going to go in here because I've got to get that to match in where my daffodil is. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. We're going to snip that down to a reasonable level that will fit in there. I have it bent because I want it to lay face up, not like, not like this. I want it straight up and down. So it's bent. So when I slide it, it's going to kind of slide up underneath my mesh and glue right where I want it to stay. Just right in here. Okay. Take my greenery. I'm going to come back in a couple pieces right there. I'm going to add some more tulips. Wait a second. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Maybe we'll come in and add. Let's see what these look like. I know, Steve, like, I want to see you do some darker color blues. But I'm like, it kind of has to all, like, it has to flow. Let's see. I'm going to make those work somehow. Let's see. Let's see if we can get a couple of them. There's that one. I'm just kind of pulling these apart. And these are all from Hobby Lobby. The tulips are from Michael's. Let's see. Uh, when the, yeah, the side covers for the zip ties. Yeah, we got them from Amazon, but you can get them at Lowe's, Home Depot. They sell them anywhere. They sell the ties more. Easy. Okay. I'm going to... Try to blend that blue. It's not a pretty blue. It's like a silvery blue, but I don't want it too close to the center. But I, I need this up under the daffodil, but not too close. So, let's do this. Let's add some of these right up underneath that. I'm going to put one to the left and one slightly to the right. Just need to make sure the tips. There we go. Just like that. Okay. So the base floral. This is what I call base floral. This is where sometimes people get stuck and they'll be like, I'm not loving that. Like when I look at yours, yours looks so much better. It's, these are base. You need to come back in and add the details because this looks very flat, very one, one dimensional. All right, so it look like if, if there was a darker blue really in the center. I don't think you have a darker blue. I don't have a darker blue. Let me look. Out of the ones... That are in there. Yeah, yeah, see, they all start like if we pulled this one. Let 
See what ends up happening is they're all roughly the same. It's like once mm -hmm. you pull them away from the yellow, mm -hmm. they just have these um, tips in here, but watch, we'll make it work. I'll just make sure that sits where it's supposed to, just like that. Okay, so now let us, we're going backwards. Um, this needs to stay in here. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna go ahead and glue my little base filler flowers right here on the end. I'm gonna pull these apart. Um, we need to add some of these little orange florals. And these little orange florals that are like growing on a little grass stem, these are from Amazon. So remember, I'm kind of mimicking exactly what we did here. So we're taking the two and we're kind of laying those in. Just like that. And then I had a little bit more of this. So let's see. We know we've got to get our tulips in, but I'm just going to grab the very end right here. Lay those in so they're a little bit thicker. Remember, we've got to separate all the tulips and start laying those in. There's one. It's funny, you can probably use scissors to cut these because there's no wire in these at this moment. one right on top to make our little trio. Let's make sure we stretch that out. Mm, let's see, we're supposed to put our mum in there. So this has to go in here. While this is still setting up. Then we add our daffodil. Trim it down a little bit. Bend it. We're going to slide this right on in. Okay, just like that. We're going to rotate it around to the other side. fillers. Just like that. A little orange grass. So it's always about blending the yellow the orange, a little bit of our filler. Okay, I'm going to pull these out because I need to put my mum in because that's what we forgot the last time because the mum goes in right over our blue. Separate our tulips. We'll go ahead and glue those in. I'm going to move the daffodil out. And there's my first tulip. I'm trying to keep the glue off of that.
no matter how much you try to make sure that there's no glue, mm -hmm. it still follows a little thread along the edge. There's our trio and our daffodil. Where's this? Are there any crafters around Louisville, Kentucky? I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Any if I know. around the Louisville, Kentucky area? Let me ask how much did you charge for this? Um, this is actually listed on my website right now. I'm charging 87. Not so much for the fact that it doesn't have that much deco much, but the florals are a lot. So now we're doing the same thing. I'm just working the outside edge, working back up. Same thing we've done. Because once we've laid the pattern, then it's super easy for us to kind of follow along and know what we need to do. Orange flowers. Okay, these are, it just makes sense that things should be smaller towards the outside edge, right? These will come off with scissors. Yep. Save our greenery because we are going to be using it. Um, we need, set that there, our daffodil, or our mum, sorry, a mum, then our tulips, the process just repeats all the way through. Do you hear him snoring? Yes. We have a cat that is just snoring. Mm. He is. He's a big Russian boy. Mm-hmm. But he's Ukrainian. He's not Ukrainian. <laughs> Stop. Okay. Hi, Teresa. She said, this cross is very beautiful. I got a request for purple crosses on our Facebook page. But on our Facebook page is a blue cross. Yeah, you can tell people that they can be made in any color. You can add any type of floral, provided that you can find them and add them in. Yeah, that's always the hard thing is people might say, well, I want yellow roses. Well, right now it might be really hard to find yeah. um, supplies. So I've added, I should have cut this off a little bit shorter. So we went back to our mum. We're adding our tulips. Another tulip. I'm trying to hold these so I can just dip it in the glue all the way through. Okay, now we've got some filling around the middle to make happen. The first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I can get my lily in there. So the lily is going to lay in between the mesh and on top, it's kind of like this. So in between the two, I don't know if you guys can see that, in between the two and on top of the other one. So I have it bent pretty well, but I want to make sure it's coated really well so that when I lay it in here, my lily stays where it's supposed to. Now I need to add in my two little pieces. These are the buds from the lilies. So I am doing the same thing. 
These are going right to, oop, trying to get it under my wing. Let's do this one as well. Right underneath, right to the center. that back in and make sure I get all the pieces of glue off right here. I'm going to, I don't know if I want the blue there. It worked for the bottom, but I'm not liking it at the top because I have less space here, less space here. So these ones kind of follow the path. Let me look down here. Let's add in Let me look. I'm looking for the perfect buds. And these ones, they have leaves, but the leaves are attached and they're a little lower than where I would want them to wind up. Let's see. I think I kind of like those kind of sliding up underneath the daffodil right there. I don't like that. So I'm building the center. But I'm being pretty picky about what's going in there. And how big does it need to be? Let's go to the other side. We wanted this one a little bit underneath. Oh, let us look at what leaves we have on the lily. Okay, so what I'm going to start doing now is adding the details. I'm going to come in and I'm going to add the leaves that are on there, but I'll show you. Down here, they're kind of like their own little pick. So I'm going to be adding these underneath. Pick this up, spin that around. I'm going to pull more lily leaves up. Now we've got to fill our center flower with the leaves that should have come from that flower. Make sure I get all my glue out of the way. So obviously we have a couple of them. This one I'm not too happy with because it won't lay flat. This one will. There we go. And let's see, one, two, three, four. Um, let's see if we should add. Sometimes it's just a matter of like putting it in, looking at it and deciding if you like the way it looks like this one. No, I don't like the way that looks. Okay, so now we will backfill the rest. We've got a lot to fill in around here a little bit more so we are going to use the same floral that we have been using 
and we're going to fill now. So we really want to keep that blue on the yellow. So I'm going to come in and lay some of these in. Trying to get my lily stem to lay flatter. I like these blue flowers because they do exactly what you want them to do, which is fill. But you don't want to get super crazy. Because we don't want to lose sight that there's a lily there. Make sure all this. What do you guys think so far? You guys are all quiet again. Mm -hmm. for a while. Hmm? It takes a little while for it to catch up. I know. Well, she has a huge booster color, but uh, yes, this definitely could be a mystery. Uh, mm -hmm. They can. Yes. Some of these we can just pull right out the end, but I like them a little bit fuller. It's always good to, if your glue kind of droops across your florals, let it dry and then you can just pull it. Like pick it straight up and out. I just love it. Oh, this is very pretty. Lovely colors. Okay. Still trying to spin it so I can get all four sides around the floral. There's another long one. One more big bunch to the center. As soon as we can find a big bunch. This one looks nice. Okay, so we've got that filled in. Now we need to go in, and now we need to add details to the center. Meaning, find one more big bunch. I don't wanna to go too crazy because I wanna be able to come in here and put some other florals in. All right, details, which means we need to come in again still with this. And I also have some yellow Queen Anne's lace. So where there is yellow, you will add blue fillers. Where there is blue, you're going to add yellow fillers, which means alongside these, you're going to come in and lay some light filler flowers in on either side of your mom's. So I'm just gonna work my way down just like this. Go down to the bottom. Just like that. We'll go back up the other side. Back over here. That one I did a little too long for what I wanted. We 
we're going to do the same thing around our lily a little bit. We're going to, or the daffodil, sorry. We're going to add these in here. This is where it starts to make a difference. Now you don't want to go so wide because if you go too wide, it pushes all your, um, your wings or flames, it'll push them too flat. So you just kind of want to keep them right along the center. And I'm constantly moving this around. Way up and under. Because then it takes the harsh line away from, okay, this is just one big, huge yellow flower. We're kind of marrying the yellow to the blue, and we'll be doing the same thing. We'll be doing the blue to the other. Okay, spin it around. Showing since I really like the yellow and blue together. Tastes are gorgeous. Your ideas are very creative and amazing. Thank you. Okay, we're just working on this last one over here. I'm really dissecting this bush pretty good. <laughs> I'm really glad I found it. One more piece right over here on the other side. Okay, now we have a ton of greenery that all came with both the tulips. Once you pull everything all apart, we have some nice tulip leaves that we're going to come in and we're going to add our leaves now. So remember we had to dissect the whole pick just to get them to come in. So I'm just breaking these apart. And then these are going to come in because obviously there are tulips. So now we're going to go in and add our tulip leaves. Wherever we have tulips, we need to add our leaves. So just pull them apart. 
And then you're just dipping them in and just adding them in. Doesn't that just like totally change the way that it looks? You can add the tall little wispy pieces. Where'd all my tulips just go? Word, I'm late. <laughs> Probably hmm? time change. Yeah. Like, Clarissa, do you share the four items that you purchase on Amazon? What company? In the um, private group, she does the complete list of this. You know, for the it. ones that I did off of Amazon today, which are just the little... The only ones that I got off of Amazon were the, the little orange flower pieces. Um, but I would normally post those in... Um, Oops, I'm trying to get that in there. Um, like if it's on YouTube, I'll post the links. If it's something that I've purchased at Amazon and you want to order it too. Other than that, like the daffodils, the mums, the little fill of flowers, um, all over from Hobby Lobby. The tulips are all from Michael's. Um, the lilies, I believe I got those from Michael's. So let me just finish adding the rest of my tulips pieces as soon as I find them. I pushed them all to the side and I pulled them all apart. So now I'm just breaking them all apart and giving my tulips Tulip stems back to my tulips. Just because I think it, you need a little greenery, you know. And I'm just kind of following the lines, like um, the parts of my flower. Oops. Flip this up. Just a little bit. We'll do this one up here, and then we just have one more on the other side. Here's some of the long stems. We'll add those too. We're like cutting the little round tips off of them. Nope, not that one. more. So wherever I have tulips, I'm going in and adding my leaves to those. one we did. We're missing any more tulips that I can see that I haven't added. I think I did those. Let's look at these stringy pieces. Let's see what these do. I kind of like that look. Neighbor's dogs are going crazy. I'm going to add these two. My daffodils. Let's 
So one on each side. there. You can just close it, babe. He's trying really hard to be quiet. Closing our blinds. Okay. So there's that. Now we need to add a little bit of yellow to the blue. So let's see what these look like. Kind of like that. It's what are these? Um, these are just some weird filler that I got from Amazon. I will find the link and I will share this with you. Sometimes I just look for things that are just has a little bit of greenery, um, just a little bit different. So I'm just pulling them apart and adding these around the areas where I have my blue. Kind of following the same pattern. Just like that. So we have blue filler on yellow, yellow filler on blue. We've added greenery to our tulips. Oops. In there. We need to lay a little bit flatter. There you go. Um, one more here. So I'm just pulling all these apart. I'm going to add one right to the very, very, very tip of my bundle. So I'll get this all off. It's kind of collecting glue as it goes around. Just lift everything up, slide it right in. It just makes for a really nice little detail. I think it's the details that make the difference. And I'm not really like extending out. I'm just kind of laying them besides what is already there. Same here. Recycling our glue as we go along. Lift up. Slide inside. Just pulling them right off the pick. But just that little touch of yellow and green is just a nice contrast. Gives it a different height. Can you think, Sharon, how you are giving so good when it comes to details? I love the details. Honestly, I could sit here. This is where it's relaxing. So if you have a really stressful day, you can just kind of come in 
and do a wreath. Lay in all your base flowers and then just come through. Um, pick apart, you know, whatever you want. So just like that. And I'm going to come around and I'm going to add that around our center because we have all blue. Remember I said how where there's blue, we have to add yellow. So now we're going to come in. We're going to add some yellow in here. And you're going to see what that does to the blue. Just adding that little touch right there, it just makes the blue stand out more. But see, if we pack them all in initially, like our center, if we just like compact everything into our center, then there's no way that you can come back in and add any of your details. There's no way you can come in and add your leaves or um, a different type of floral to the mix because we've packed it in too tight. So you've got to leave a little gap so you have a little bit of room to kind of work those in. Hey, let's see. Blue added green all the way through, added it all the way around. Um, there's one. might not like these. Let me just look. No, don't like them. So sometimes it's just a matter of trying some things. Let me add my Queen Anne's lace and then I think I finished. I might add a couple. Oh, where are they? Get some white. Have these little white picks. They came from the roses. I think I want to add them just in here for just something different. I know it's like we can hardly notice those. But I think sometimes just adding some white, I like I don't want to add a ton of white. They're just these little, I don't know what they are. They're just in my rose bushes. It's like their pick. Let's add, this is where I don't like necessarily big, huge bushes. 
like the Queen Anne's lace comes like in a big huge spider bush. But this is where I'll just kind of come in and add little pops of white. So I'm just kind of going zigzag all the way up. Oh, thanks. I can just never find picks that have everything that I want in them. So I just get little things that I know I can make fillers. You know, like I knew I wanted to add small touches of white, like I had white roses out and I didn't like those initially. Um, I had white ranunculus, didn't like them. So we're just kind of coming in and just softening. Because remember we had all the hard lines of yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, and now we have to, like, we're just softening that look. So it doesn't look so yellow, blue, yellow, blue. Another big bunch. And you just break them all off. Okay, the bottom is done. So I'm just working through here, still adding small little details. I know you might like think, well, that's a lot of work to go through. But I think it pays off in the end. It'd be nice if we could just buy picks like that and you just slide the whole thing in and be done. Um, Lolly, I'll tell you what, she, once she's done, this will be available immediately for replay. So um, just go back in and watch the beginning because she is already tied all of the um, mesh down at the very beginning, so you can see how she does it. Petal wise? Yeah, she wanted to see how you did the mesh and put them together. Yeah. Keep smacking the stand. It. Yeah, we are. Technically, I could be done and then just doing all these little things off camera, but I figured um, you probably want to see what I do, which is, so you buy your Queen Anne's lace like this, and for my filler, I just go through and I cut them all apart, and then I just have little stems that I can place wherever I want them to go. And I think most of what I see is people just stop and they just do their main floral and maybe some medium and then that's where they stop. 
So I think if you can find a way to blend them in, just adding, you know, keep going smaller, um, looking for areas where it just seems like something's missing. I wonder if I'll be able to do this in heaven. <laughs> Only with royal florals. Be like, mm, this just needs a little bit right in here. Just a little touch of white. Um, one more here. One piece to the side. So do you think that the details help? Do you think it's worth it to come back in and add all those? I'm hoping you guys do. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Give it lots of likes and loves. And hopefully this is giving you a better look than when I did it the first time. So you're kind of getting an overhead view. You're seeing it exactly like I am. Tomorrow, once you take pictures of it, uh -huh, yeah, on the blue door, that'll make all the difference. This is available on her Aspirations and More website for sale, but obviously, because it wasn't complete, it doesn't look like this. No, you see, like the little mock up, the, yeah, exactly. It, it's me just laying florals on top of um, the deco mesh itself, and um, I'm like, oh, okay, because that helps me decide, okay, this is what that flower's for. This is what that flower's for. Um, no, those are too big. I don't like how those work. Um, and now I'm just pulling all my glue off. And there you have it. It's all done. Hoping you guys like it. I suggest I love the details. But there you go. Yeah, now with all the other blue flowers and little, little fillers, the center starlet doesn't seem pale anymore. Mm -mm, because we added our blue filler, we added some of our, um, the yellow filler, we added our Queen Anne's lace to that. So it's super, super nice. And there you have it. Super simple. So you can do this with anything. Like I said, you can put a big bow in the center. You can start here with a bow and then just have your florals cascade out. Lay your bow in first and then do the same thing. Have your, you know, your main flower and then have it get progressively smaller as it fans out towards the edge because that just looks more natural. That's what a florist is going to do. They're going to make sure that everything, you know, just kind of flows, goes from large to small. And then you don't have to be so massively wide here in the center. Just have it a small center and then just keep your lines going so that you can still see your mesh and you can still see that it's, you know, a cross shape. And imagine how these would look on a pastor's podium for church, on oh, yeah. church doors, um, whatever. You know, if they're not used for um, graveside memorials, which is usually what I get most of them for is people who want to personalize it. So they'll just tell you, you know, add this type of floral, leave the middle open, or, you know, I'm gonna come back in and, and do whatever I wanna do. Um, but they just need a base to work off of. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Thanks for sticking with me. I know we went a little long, cause that's how the details go. Um, 
but hopefully you guys will find this enjoyable. The view has been great for you to be able to see this from a totally different angle. And um, I will see you guys next Friday at 5 p.m., which is Pacific time and 7 Central or 8 Eastern time. And I hope you guys have an amazing week. Thanks for joining me and I'll talk to you soon.